Not to brag, but I was killing it as a teacher. <coughs> After bouncing around to a couple different schools during my first few years of teaching, I had started at a brand new school. And this one was it. This one was where I really wanted to settle in and make my career because it was so great. I loved my coworkers. I'd actually recently started dating one of them, so that was exciting see each other all day at school. And after sharing a classroom for years, I finally had my own. And most importantly, my ninth graders were awesome. The kids in my English class were sweet, they were funny, they were really smart and hardworking and well-behaved. With the exception of one class at the very end of the school day, but classes at the end of the day are always at a peak level of energy and hormones and volumes of Axe body spray. <laughs> so that was kind of par for the course and I was very happy. Until October and then in pretty quick succession my work boyfriend and I broke up. So still really fun to see each other all day at school in the hallway. And my class at the end of the day had grown increasingly vocal and disinterested in anything having to do with To Kill a Mockingbird, which was the book we were reading at the time. And that really broke my heart because I love that novel and I really wanted them to connect with it the way that I did. And most disturbingly, I had developed this kind of weird medical ailment and I, of course, couldn't restrain myself from Googling. And of course, WebMD told me it was some kind of like Ebola, AIDS, <laughs> cancer trifecta. So totally, totally freaked out. I made my way to my doctor and she reassured me. She thought I was probably gonna pull through. But I was gonna need to have a couple follow-up appointments to try to figure out what was going on. And that meant, of course, getting a substitute. As a kid, getting a substitute it's like Christmas, right? Those are magic words. It means someone's rolling the TV VCR cart down the hallway. It means chaos. It means misbehavior with no real repercussions because they'd be gone the next day. And uh, for all those same reasons, getting a sub when you're the teacher is a slightly less enchanting prospect. So as I made my plans, I had a pretty strong suspicion that something would go awry. And that suspicion was confirmed the next morning when I came back in to find the note the sub had left. Um, she basically described my students as psychotic squirrels on crack. <laughs> so I thought it was time for a talk with them. And I explained that I, I wasn't mad, just disappointed. <laughs> because I, I really I had expected better from them. They were better people and I wanted them to show who they really were. And I knew that when I was out later that week for my next appointment, they would be the angels I knew they could be. And they looked very solemn and they nodded their heads in agreement. And I went home that day knowing that situation had been handled. <laughs> However, the morning after I returned from my next appointment, I came into my classroom and I noticed something really odd. On every single desk, there was a brightly colored post-it note. And so I was intrigued. I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe this was some cool game the sub had come up with to play with the kids. So I made my way to the first note and I peered a little more closely to see what was on it. It said, this one wouldn't stop throwing things across the room. <laughs> And then another said he was very disrespectful. The very was underlined like 11 times. The third, she wouldn't stop talking to the girl next to her. And on and on and on, I marched my way up and down the rows, peeling each post-it off and reading the very specific offense that my students had committed. There were no names on any of them, so it was impossible to know who had done what, and I quickly realized it really didn't matter who had done what, because they all had done something really bad. And I could not believe, after my, my earnest heart-to-heart -heart talk with them, this was how they behaved. I felt disrespected. I felt disappointed. I felt angry. And I couldn't wait until that class got there later that afternoon. I stewed all day long, coming up with the exact words I could say that would really let them know that this time they had crossed the line. 
And when seventh period rolled around, I was ready. I rolled into my carefully prepared remarks and when I was really getting to the good part, I felt this familiar scratchy burn begin way in the back of my throat. And then for about a half second, my voice wavered. Nope, don't you dare, I told myself. So I cleared my throat and I tried again. There's a, an expression in teaching that veteran teachers like to share with the newbies. It's you know, a way to explain how important classroom management is. It goes, don't smile until Christmas. <laughs> And I really wish that someone had told me the lesser known follow-up to that advice, which is don't cry until Halloween. <laughs> As a frequent and shall we say enthusiastic crier, I knew what was about to happen and I also knew that I was powerless to stop it. So my anxiety over all the medical stuff and my embarrassment over this workplace romance gone very wrong and my frustration with my students, all of it just kind of bubbled to the surface. I felt my eyes begin to fill with tears. The tears begin to just stream down my cheeks. And in this wobbly voice that isn't even mine, I blurted out, you all just must really hate me to act this badly. <laughs> They all sat there, I think for the first time all year, silent. <laughs> Their mouths dropped open as if we were like in a cartoon. And I could barely summon the presence of mind to pass out the assignment for the day, this group project with To Kill a Mockingbird, tell them what was due at the end of the period, and gather what remaining shreds of dignity were left as I kind of slunk back to my desk. The kids, for once, were extremely diligent. They moved their chairs, they got out their books, they got right to work. They were on it. They were the quietest they've ever been in their life, actually. And that was good, because I didn't have to worry about them. I kind of zoned them out and instead went into my own neurotic head as I started to calculate how long before the entire school hears what just happened. <laughs> and how many hours before I received the first parent email questioning my emotional stability and being able to leave this class and how many more months until I can transfer away from the school where I thought I could actually stay? I was so embarrassed. I mean, I can't believe I'd been patting myself on the back for being such a great teacher. I was the worst teacher in the world. I mean, who cries at school in front of their students? Who has this little self-control? By the end of the class, I had gathered myself back under control to the point where I was able to tell the kids, put all your desks and chairs back, you know, come and bring your, your work up to turn in. And that's when the entire class came up and surrounded my desk at once. It's a little scary. One girl was leading the charge and I noticed that in addition to their assignments in hand, she was holding a thick pink envelope, which she extended out to me. And she said, we feel terrible. We all wrote you individual apology notes. I was stunned. I had absolutely no idea that they had been up to anything in my kind of haze of humiliation. And I started to kind of apologize too at this point and say like, you know, my reaction was maybe a little over the top. Um, but they said, no, 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 we really feel bad. And then one of the kids chimed in, read the envelope. And that's what I noticed underneath where my name was written on the envelope in tiny letters at the bottom, someone had carefully written, the irony is that we hurt someone who doesn't hurt us just like shooting a mockingbird. Whoa. Wait. So my students understand irony and they can apply it to a real world situation and they do get the symbolism and they connect to the message of empathy in the story. I mean, like I said, I was killing it as a teacher. Thank you.